Hello, Internet. This is you and Spence and ESE Insight Calling. Eurovision. What kind of a year has it been? Coming up, the start of a new season, a reminder about platforms, and a powerful empty stage. Yes, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. I'm Ewan Spence, and welcome to another ESC Insight Podcast. It's not a News Insight Podcast. It is essentially the epilogue to 2020. We have reached the end, and we are, in a way, back on familiar ground. The year has ended credits have rolled we have a good idea where the contest is going to be next year we have the slow summer and we also have the first of september the mythical date where new songs can be released but we also know a little bit more than normal for this time in the eurovision year we know that we are returning to rotterdam next year in previous years there's been an assumption about where in the winning country we will end up some years it's obvious Portugal's hosting, the only practical choice was Lisbon, but it was an easy bet to not just say Lisbon, but to also say it's going to be in the Altice Arena before the confetti had even hit the floor. Yet if you had said Dusseldorf after Lena's win for Germany, you would have picked up great odds at the bookies. It is harder to predict the health of the world in 12 months' time, but the totemic significance, not just of Rotterdam hosting, but of it being in the Ahoy theatre, will not be lost on the community. But we should note in the press release that a number of different scenarios will be considered. And that means a lot of Eurovision next year is in the hands of science. We have nearly half of the artistic slots filled already, to record this podcast, there's 18 artists over the weekend. San Marino's Senate, Latvia's Samantha Tina, Czech Republic's Benny Cristo, Slovenia's Anna Soklik and Malta's Destiny have all been added to the list. That likely means more internal selections for these artists next year, although don't rule out some showcase finals of multiple songs for a single act. For the countries that have already declared they will not automatically select an artist again, there will be national finals. Submissions are open for many of them right now. While this may not seem fair in the likes of the Mamas in Sweden, those selection shows in the Nordic are part of the fabric of both the public service broadcasters, but the record industry and the wider media. Where countries have selected the artist for 2020, the artist is returning, but the likes of MGP, Estilawa and Melody Festivalen select the song and the song is not going to be eligible for 2021. It is the end of the season, but it's also the beginning of the season. Europe Shine a Light was the curtain call on the 2020 season for the Eurovision Song Contest. No year is ever forgotten, but the last few months especially will become part of the legend of Eurovision. Traditionally, the summer is the off-season, but with the Days Till Eurovision clock now reset, we are in a new season, and a line has been drawn underneath everything from 2020. That doesn't mean we forget, but it does mean we should think carefully about the impact of the 2020 season on the 2021 season. With 18 acts returning, there's going to be a tendency to directly compare the 2021 songs with the 2020 songs. And I would encourage you all out there to be very careful when doing that. Artists mature over their careers. Over the next 12 months, artists that are coming back to Eurovision will find new influences, rediscover old techniques and learn more about themselves. The younger artists, such as Destiny, will be maturing rapidly as musicians, while the older artists and bands know what it means to keep creating. If we look at Rotterdam 2021 as being something that puts right what once went wrong, it's not going to work. We're not going to get tears still getting sober, growing, or thought about things. We're going to get new pieces. We're going to get different flavours. We're going to get challenging sounds that don't match up to this year. And we're going to get something that the artists can be proud of in 2021. They've been through even more of a roller coaster than the community. Give them space, 
let them be creative and let them bring something fresh and honest to themselves to next year's show. Shine the light looked back. Eurovision 2021 will look forwards. So must the community. Although it was a smaller platform than a full contest would have delivered, the 2020 entrants have a platform on which they can build their careers. The biggest winner is arguably Daddy Freyer, who's won hearts over Europe and the world, and on Russell Crowe's Twitter stream. Musicians from smaller countries can sometimes find it difficult to break through and be noticed further afield. The Eurovision Song Contest offers one route to do that, giving them a spotlight in the run-up to the contest that can help them find a new audience. Daddy Freyer will not be the only performer who will pick up attention due to their entry into the contest that never was. I'd expect Diodato and Jungu McCree to have a higher profile over the next 12 months. And of course, the returning artists now have a much longer runway to fly from than any other contestants in Eurovision history. If anyone is looking for a great example, then look no further than Norway's Kaino. Winning the telly vote in 2019, although you wouldn't know that from the televised coverage, Tom, Alexandra and Fred could easily have went their separate ways after Tel Aviv. Instead, they flew to Edinburgh to play in a room above a pub in Leith with a capacity of about 60, as well as gigs in Germany, trips to Australia and the sort of things that artists growing their fan base will do. And all the time they were releasing singles online, building up an engaged audience and having the time of their lives creating music. That culminated in their first album launch on May the 15th, just a little more than a year after the Eurovision triumph. Is it the success of ABBA? Not yet. Is it an artistic success? For sure. Can Eurovision make careers? Definitely. There is a moment that stage performers will know all too well. The big show is finished, the audience has left the building and there's a quiet calm in the auditorium. There are echoes not just of the preceding show, but of countless other shows and the people that put them on, just sitting there in the wings, feeling, inhabiting and being part of the space. In that moment, you can walk out not just into the empty stage, but into the world of dreams, memories, elation, excitement and energy, all infused in the floor, in the walls, in the seats, in the lighting and in the atmosphere. You can walk out and have a moment of reflection before turning to the stage door as the janitors sweep up and then turn the lights off for another evening. After the credits finished rolling on Shine the Light, a reflective tweet was posted. Good luck to everyone next year. Thanks to all the incredible Eurovision fans and followers. It's been the most amazing 10 years of my life. I like to think that As he posted his last tweet as the executive supervisor of the song contest, Jan Olesand looked around his stage, gently smiled and quietly slipped away from a job well done. Yet as he leaves the Eurovision Song Contest, I don't think he will ever forget what he has accomplished. Mr Take It Away certainly won't be forgotten by the community. And so we come to our curtain call here at EAC Insight. To try and thank everyone means that someone will be forgotten. Some cliches never get old. But thanks from me to the team at ESC Insight here, the delegations, performers and others we've worked with this year, to the community sites, publications and forums that continue to uphold the ideals of the Eurovision Song Contest. And to you out there who choose to follow the journey with us as your companions. It means a huge amount to read all your feedback, to see the likes, to see the comments, to see the discussions that come out of ESC Insight. But for now, stay safe, be kind, to Ra for now. See you soon.